The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science: storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen for your children to become amazing and successful human beings. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is. Hi, I'm Helen, and I teach reception year one children at the moment at a small school in Buckinghamshire. And I'm Nicola, and I teach year six children、um, at a school in Hampshire. And I've spent time in my career also teaching students at Teach Training College at university. And today we are exploring what science we can teach with a folk tale found all around the world on the importance of balance, adapted by us to feature legendary pirate queen Grace O'Malley. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for Pirate Grace and the Mermaid Medicine. There, you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an Epic Educator, you'll also get a copy as an ebook or paperback, beautifully illustrated by Erica Terry Rose, as well as the full audio book for you to download at any time. There are even some tips there for telling the story yourself, and a whole heap of resources to go with the lesson ideas we're about to discuss, including any extra lesson ideas that we don't have time to fit into this podcast. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Helen and Nicola and Grace. And yeah, we're starting to get all scientific, which is, I mean, science is what gave us medicine, right? So、um, the Mermaid Queen in this story is basically a mythological scientist. scientist. There's got to be plenty of science here. Helen, would you like to kick us off with the science for ages four to seven? Yes, I really, really would. The ideas I've got today are all around kind of water and potions and. Ships and things.、Mm-hmm. So I'll start with the bit of an investigation around making magical healing water. This has no particular British Key Stage One curriculum. It's got no particular link, but it's more、mm-hmm. of an investigation. And I've got this idea that you know you can make kind of bottles of things that you shake up and they all look magical. Yeah. So you get some water, but you add just anything you want to make this magical bottle. So it、hmm. can be glittery, it can be buttons, it can be whatever the children find, and then shake it up, and then、mm. just observe, because scientific investigation involves observing. What、yeah. do you notice? Thinking about maybe why, not necessarily knowing the answer, especially、mm. when you're kind of four or five years old,、um, but just observing what happens, and then the children might notice that some of the different things they put in sink more quickly. Some stay.、Mm. Floating and suspended, or some don't really go down at all.、Mm. And I thought this would be a very creative activity, but also scientific. Yeah, I think、um, you definitely want to stick some sequins in there, wouldn't you? Yes,、uh, sort of still make it very <laughs> liquid looking. Yes, anything shiny and sparkly glitter, and definitely glitter, glitter,、yes. and <laughs> all of these things, and then you know get the children to give it a good shake, and then watch and observe what happens, and theorise as to why. <laughs> <laughs> There'd need to be、um, a, a big health and safety warning with this one, of course, though, to make sure that your children don't try and drink the magical healing medicine that they are creating. Yes, absolutely. It may be magical, but it will not heal them. Yeah, maybe use、uh, George's marvelous medicine as a cautionary <laughs> tale. Example, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then、Excellent. I always love a boat story because who doesn't、mm. who doesn't enjoy making boats with small children? And I I, I can't tell whether you're being sarcastic there. No, or not. I love it. I love I love it. I love it when、um, you know, get the children to look at different materials and what they think is going to float, and yes, get them to make、yeah. a boat and make those predictions. And then when it sinks, you go, oh, why did it sink? And something that I've done. Quite a lot with children that I absolutely love is so you've done you've done work on floating and sinking and then you give them a lump of plasticine、mm. and they all watch as it sinks and then you give them the challenge of making a boat that will float out of that same lump of plasticine yeah and it's fascinating because they begin to recognise actually it's the same lump of plasticine it weighs the same、mm-hmm. but that one sinks. But this one we can make float, and how can we make it float? And we've talked previously about teamwork, and all of this teamwork comes out when you do things like this: of the children、mm-hmm. talking about what's happening, sharing their ideas, and solving problems together.、And、there's a huge sense of achievement if they do manage to make a boat that floats out of this lump of plasticine.、Mm-hmm. But there's also a lot to learn 
if they don't? Why? Yeah. Why didn't your boat float? That one floated. Why didn't yours? And that resilience, does it matter mm. if it didn't float? Which for some children, it matters incredibly, but it's also a, a lesson about you learn a lot even when yeah. you make mistakes and it doesn't go well, you learn just as much. And a good way that you can approach this is, again, by not leaving the world of the story and yeah. have Grace um, arriving back at port and deciding that she's going to strike it out now as her own pirate captain, given that her father has gone his <laughs> way and, and maybe they're just not meshing. Um, so, yeah, she's got to – yeah, he's not obeying any of the rules yeah, that he's, um, <laughs> he's not the kind earlier of in the week. She wants anymore. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, yeah she, she has to design and build her own boat. And yeah. um, that way, if anything goes wrong and you have children who are being particularly sensitive about it, you can bring it back into the world of the story and have Grace saying, okay, well, then we're going to have a look at a different way around it. And mm. if a character that they have created inside their head um, and already fallen in love with is the one sort of setting the challenge through you as the educator, then you know by always pulling it back to that you're pulling it back to someone that the children have got an investment in and uh, yeah. an emotional link to so it can help them to develop that resilience that you were talking about there absolutely i think that would work really well uh, having the character in the story as the person setting the task rather than the teacher mm. can be really really powerful and helpful for children and very engaging as well Lovely. Well, let's uh, let's climb the decks and speak about the uh, ages 7 to 11 as well. What science have you found, Nicola? Well, there's quite a lot of areas of the curriculum that could easily fit into mm. this story. For example, on the chip, what sort of food are they eating? Have they got a balanced diet? Mm. Oh, yes. Are they getting the nutrients they need to be able to scrub those decks are they really, getting really scurvy? Clean? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's a perfect example. <laughs> Brilliant. Also, often for older children, we think about famous scientists that have sort of solved problems in the world. So mm -hmm. again, scientists that have solved diseases, you know, the smallpox or more recently COVID and mm. the, the scientists that have helped alleviate those yeah. problems that have, have happened. So sort of doing some research about that and presenting to each other. Do you know, that's um, really interesting mm. what you just said there, because um, we know the names of the people who discovered the cures for things like smallpox, but I don't mm -hmm. think a name has ever been mentioned for whoever it was who developed the covid vaccine i think it's all yeah. the names of companies isn't it rather yeah, it than is, individual yeah. people mm. might be interesting to explore that side of things with your young learners and that that i guess would be an element of pshe and history brought into the science discussion definitely and wherever you are in the world there would be people that are local that have been part of that um, mm. there's certainly people in Southampton near where I live that were part of studies finding out about the effects of the vaccine and those scientists are living scientists that perhaps mm. could motivate our future scientists for the future to to take up that sort of role would you be able to bring them into your school to actually talk with your young learners yeah and, and then we've got the wonders of zoom nowadays or, yes. or yes. teams you know <laughs> basically the world is our oyster isn't it yeah. <laughs> literally sorry there's a pun there it's under the sea. Oh, it's under the sea. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Rob's going to have a run for his money when we uh, bring him onto yes. a podcast with you, Nicola. <laughs> Can I go to the under the sea theme though? Because yeah, let's face it, it, there's a whole there's a whole world there. There's a whole habitat mm. there. And again, that links beautifully to science. Mm. Looking at food chains within uh, under the sea. So the Queen of the Mer people, obviously that's fictional, mm -hmm. but under the sea there are an array of creatures that rely on each other, that need each other, you know, the predators, different creatures in that environment. So, so mm. thinking about what creatures live under the sea, thinking about their classification as well, thinking about their life cycles and also something for slightly older children, but how have these creatures adapted to the environment that they yes, live in? Yeah. Yeah. So thinking specifically about adaptation, I've been doing that with my 10, 11 year olds recently. And one of their tasks that could be easily linked to this story is, is to create a creature that is adapted to its environment and, and say how mm. it's done that. Maybe we say where the ship is, so it's a cold environment or a warm environment yeah. as it's going yeah. through, then creating a creature that would live under the sea in that habitat. And it would be beautiful to let them do that and then do an investigation to see whether their creature actually exists or, or something in nature yeah. that is really close to, to what they've created. I know when you look at it in more detail, some of these creatures, you know, they're microscopic yeah. and they look like mini aliens, but they, they have incredible adaptations to live in the environment 
environment they're in. Mm. Actually, in the we had another mermaid story recently. We were talking about the Hans Christian Andersen um, version of the Little Mermaid story, and I think in our discussion around the science for that, um, Helen, with with Rob, we were talking about adaptations that that mermaids might have because mm. sometimes mermaids are presented with gills. Yes, I think we, we were. don't know whether they are you know actually mammals in the way that dolphins mm. are, and they they come up for air and then go back down again. So just sort of thinking of all those ideas together could you as part of your adaptations work could you um take the idea of a, a human as that you know a mermaid is a human that's sort of developed to to live underwater and could you mm. take us humans and think what adaptations could you add for us to more effectively live at the top of the mountain or in a cave or yeah there's sort of mermaids and mermen could you create the equivalent using the scientific knowledge you know of, of adaptations to live all, in all kinds of different habitats around the world yeah yeah you could you could look at the history of mankind as well mm. and how you know, homo sapiens have actually adapted over the years and, and and what adaptations might they need to have in a future environment i mean it's slightly going away from the story but um you know in a thousand years time as our climate's getting warmer mm. how will humans have to adapt to be able to cope and live and survive in that environment mm. yeah very good point That's all we have time for in this episode, folks, and indeed this week. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app. Please do also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start the story-led revolution in classrooms around the world so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable, and enjoyable all at the same time. We'll be back next week so Pirate Grace can help us plan lessons in history, art, geography, design and technology, physical education, and religious education. Right now, though, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio! And we hope to hear your story soon! soon.